Hey everyone, welcome to a special edition Mass Transit Commute. This one's super exciting for me. I've been teasing version eight of Mass Transit for a while. I've talked a lot about it on Twitter. I've written up some documents to kind of show the changes. It's a huge update, super focused on developer productivity. And let's just get into it. Version 8 is in developed format. If you go out to NuGet, you can see that beyond the version 731 official release, we now have 8.0 develop releases. These are still pre-release. I mean, this has very little testing on it, but it's mostly the same code. So, you know, everything I've run through it has worked, at least in, until here. So what I thought I would do is I'm going to do a cold upgrade. I have never upgraded this project before. I want to be as surprised as you are in what it takes to upgrade from 7.3.1 to 8.0 .0 develop 7.3.4. So that's what we're, or 3.7.4, that's what we're gonna go to. That was released earlier today. Um, so let's jump into it. I have a pretty complex solution here. It has APIs, it builds a Docker service. They talk to each other. We have sagas, we have Entity Framework Core. We have a whole bunch of things in here. So what I'm gonna do first, and just to kind of kick this off and get started, is I'm gonna do a global search and replace. And I'm going to replace everywhere I see 7.3.1. As you can see, it finds all my references. And I'm going to replace that with 800 develop 374. So I'm just going to hit replace. I'm going to do replace all. Say, yep, yeah, boom, done. Now we'll watch Ryder kind of reload and resync and re get excited. And ah, the red is starting to show up. Awesome. Good times, good times. So let's start at the very basic project. If we look at the release notes that I've put out, some of the first things we have to do is like remove references to projects that are no longer part of the solution. So let's go double check and see what we have here. I have sample contracts. We can see that that's using mass transit. I'll leave that as it can be for now because that looks pretty fine. Uh, we have sample components, which is using mass transit eight. Looks good, don't see any problems there. Sample service, uh-oh, sample service has missing dependencies. What are we missing? Okay, ah, uh, yes, mass transit ASP.NET Core no longer exists. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, everything else looks fine, so we'll save that. We'll go back to the API one here. Probably has the same ASP.NET Core reference. We're gonna get rid of that. Okay, what else do we have? Sample server, we still have errors. What do we have here? Okay, it looks like we have a namespace change. Mass Transit Internals Extensions. That's what I get for using internals in my code. We'll just change that to internals. I got rid of a lot of granular namespaces. So the first thing we're gonna have to do here is go through and like do a whole lot of namespace cleanup. So let's just go and look for the errors. Okay, we're gonna import that. Um, looks like internals again, so we'll just bring that in. Uh, Mass Transit Extensions Dependency Injection no longer exists. It's built into Mass Transit, so there's no reason to have that special. Ah, tricky one, Service Collection Bus Configurator. This is really now just iBus Registration Configurator. Simple enough, as we see. Of course, you know, nothing's ever simple. Um, and this is because, the, so that now we're into the test fixture section of the code. So this has a little bit of test fixture code that I've set up and, you know, some people may have cut and pasted, whatever. Uh, we'll get that type in there, which is just in the mass transit namespace. Um, okay, let's go back to the state machine test fixture. This probably has a lot of changes. We're going to get rid of all those namespaces that are garbage. Uh, looks like we have an obsolete. We'll come back to that. Let's focus on getting the namespaces cleaned up first. Um, that looks good. I have two little annoying things. Um, so let's go look at this error now. Transaction state. Ah, using autonomous. Not a name. It's a namespace, but the state machine is now inside the mass transit namespace. Everything is now in the mass transit namespace. So super clean and easy to figure out. Shouldn't be a pain. Um, so let's go to the next one. Oh, again, no autonomous. Hey, no green pipes either. No more trying to figure out what namespace you needed when it didn't exist. Let's go to the next error. Ah, same thing. Green pipes, definition, don't need it. Exclude from topology. Oh, that's just in mass transit. Nothing special. Um, same thing there, using mass transit. No more deep namespace messiness. 
Look at that, just using mass transit, nothing to know. It's an entity framework specific type, it knows it. Same thing there, nothing to see here. Uh, no extensions dependency injection needed. This is that bus registration configurator again. No green pipes needed. Don't know why I have that partitioner type in here. That's weird. I think this is because I think this is because mass transit didn't have partitioner support. So we'll figure that out later. Um, looks good there. Again, we're just cleaning up namespaces. Tons of them to clean up. I could just do a cleanup with Rider, and it would find all this stuff for me. Okay, the first really nasty break, activity. Okay, so interface activity is obsolete and it will throw an error. So instead of activity, which conflicted with routing slipped activities, it is now I state machine activity. Ah, I hate when it does that. Okay, so activities for state machines are now I state machine activities. And behavior is playing nicely with the world, I behavior. So pretty easy to cut and paste these. These errors pop up. It's just clean up. Everyone's going to be happy with it. Simple namespace now, mass transit. Everything's nice, playful. Great. That was easy enough. Uh, same thing in here. I state machine activity. And change behavior to I behavior. Don't worry about those warnings yet because they're just informational. Change that to I behavior. And good. Okay, I think we compiled. At that point, we don't have any errors. Let's check the build, see if it actually builds. So again, four projects, a unit test project. Um, oh, yeah, sample components tests. Got to fix that one. Boom, this one was using mass transit.extensions.dependency injection, which does not exist in version 8. It's all just part of mass transit, so we don't need that anymore. Let's build it up. Okay, we get a couple warnings, but that's okay. We can get there. We'll figure that out. Let's run the unit tests and see if they actually run. I mean, if they do, I will be shocked, but okay, they did. Okay. Now, admittedly, all these ran perfectly with 731. All I did was go and change some of the deprecated interfaces, some of that stuff, and all my unit tests are passing. Let's do the real hardcore tests. Let's do a Docker Compose up. And we'll have to do a build. So we'll do a Docker Compose Up build. There's two Docker containers in this, one for the API and one for the backing service that supports Entity Framework and all that. So this Docker Compose Up is gonna bring up RabbitMQ, it's gonna bring up Postgres, and it's gonna bring up the, uh, the two services, which I'll bring up the web browser and kind of show what the service does, since I kind of didn't do that at first. Uh-oh, endpoint faulted. That does, oh, we're not up yet, Never mind. Sorry, I panicked for a second, I was getting a little scared. Um, let's see here, what do we got, what do we got? Dispatcher, RabbitMQ, should see the service start here shortly. Okay, endpoints are up, bus is connected, everything looks great. Let's go to the web, check and see if our API loads. Okay, this is our local API. This is a pretty simple application. Actually, it's really complex behind the scenes, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. Um, I am gonna generate a GUID real quick, just so I have a unique identifier for the transaction. And I'm going to put a unique transaction ID. For the routing key, I am going to put first national, and I'm not going to go into what all this does. It's just kind of fun. And I'm going to put uh, hello Wordle. Oh, <laughs> yes, hello Wordle. I play too much Wordle lately. Once a day, though. It's not addictive. It's just a thing. So we're going to kick this out. This submits a project. You'll see that I get a to a response. You can see the body is hello world. It's got a timestamp, a transaction ID. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the second half of that. And this is going to actually correlate back to that, uses a saga to correlate the response back to the request. Here I'm going to put just hello again, hit execute, and I can see that my saga works. I get my first initial hello again, the original request was hello Wordle. And so my sagas are working, my state machines are working, my consumers are working, my API site is working, everything is working. I'm pretty stoked. What didn't I do? Let's take a look. Well, I removed references to packages that don't exist, did all that. I didn't have a third-party container like Autofac or any of those, so that wasn't even a problem for me. And I cleaned up a bunch of using statements. What I didn't have to deal with was JSON Serializer. Apparently everything just worked because 
One of the changes in version eight is by default, we're now using system text JSON as the message serializer. So I didn't touch a thing. It switched to system text JSON and all my messages work. Now let's look at my contracts and see what that means. In this project, all of my contracts are records. So interfaces still work just fine. They totally work as well. I've just started using records more and apparently I can't spell available. <laughs> um, but I've switched more to just using records. Uh, and I can see that I have my attribute exclude from topology. That's for my response event. If I go out to the broker, take a peek, what do I have? I have exchanges. I don't have a response event exchange, so it didn't create an exchange for that. Everything's looking like it's supposed to look. So admittedly, oh wait, hosted service. I didn't look at that yet. So where do I have that? Let's go take a look at the videotape. Uh, program CS. Okay, look at that. Microsoft extensions hosting doesn't even need it. Let's come down here and look. Okay, what do we have here? We have an AdMass Transit hosted service of true. Now this is marked as obsolete, but I'm still specifying true because I want it to wait until the bus is connected before starting the service. Well, you could that will eventually go away, but I'm just gonna steal the code from this because I wanna add this in here. And I'm gonna say services.configure options. Please tell me this will work. Um, I don't know why it isn't catching that. I must have done something weird. Oh, I think it's add options dot configure. I probably have to fix that. Yeah, I will have to fix that because that's annoying. That's something I had wrong in the syntax. I'll fix that in the release notes. Uh, I don't care about a start or stop timeout, but I do want to wait until started. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And so now I've gotten rid of the obsolete method and I'm configuring the mass transit host options in the container because mass transit is now using configuration options, everything. So all of that stuff is now fully supported out of the box. I might as well just put it in here. I could set other properties if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. And there, now I got rid of that obsolete. So that should build. Let me go ahead and kill the service here. Docker compose up, build it again. I've only ever run this from the containers. I have no idea. I'm sure it runs from F5. I've just never really done it. So actually I probably did a long time ago, but it doesn't matter. We'll wait, it'll take a second. So it's building up. We can see that it's connecting, waiting for RabbitMQ to rerun because RabbitMQ runs when you run the container up. I didn't stop just the individual container package. Once we see this pop up, which looks like RabbitMQ just started, we will see this come up. Okay, the API is coming up, connected. That's all the services are connected up, tons of exchange, everything's happy. We bring this up again. I don't remember that GUID. What do you bet I have? I don't have that cut and pasted either. Okay, so we'll have to create a new one, not a big deal. Just another identifier for the transaction. I will say, hello world. Oh, we will say <laughs> first national, and we will come here and throw hello world. We'll execute, all is good. Obviously the bus started, everything was fine. So that was just one of the little obsolete things that we did. Um, so yeah, so all of that's up and running. My tests pass, my service runs, everything's upgraded to version eight. My dependency list is much smaller. In almost all cases, I just have using mass transit, which is awesome. Uh, I don't know what this Newtonsoft JSON link is. Oh, this is my health response writer, which is actually pretty funny. So I think this will be funny. I think this is a result dot two. No, 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 no. No, 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 can't remember what that is. I actually created an extension method for this and I can't remember what it's called, but it converts this and doesn't use json.net to do it. But anyway, that was just some formatting I was doing. Mass Transit has health information. So if I actually go to like, I think it's health slash live, you can see that the host endpoint is ready. That's the name of it, all of that stuff. So you're able to actually see that the bus is healthy. If I were to come in here and do like a docker compose stop rabbitmq and stop rabbitmq, you could see that the bus would be degraded, degraded endpoints, everything's bad because the world's bad. Uh, now if I do just docker compose start rabbitmq, sorry, it's a diversion, but it's fun because hey, health checking is cool. 
it's unhealthy, it's not ready, it's still unhealthy, it's still unhealthy, the world's bad. Come on, come on, you can get it, you can get it, you can do it. Here it comes, there's RabbitMQ. Okay, now we're healthy because we finally connected and you can see that the endpoints all came back up. So anyway, that's Mass Transit version eight, pretty painless. I know there's gonna be edge cases, I know it isn't that simple, but this was a pretty involved solution and it, uh, it was a pretty painless transition. So uh, thanks for tuning in. There'll be more to come with version eight as we get kind of the migration notes updated and I learn how to use options. Uh, but other than that, it's been a few months of work and it's, I think, just a so much cleaner experience. It's just everything is much more integrated. I'm super happy about it. I like it. But again, that's me. I enjoy working on Mass Transit. So thanks for tuning in. There'll be more to come and we'll catch you later.